Hello folks, Alex here. This is Alex on Abridged and this is my TBR and Pile of Possibilities for October. So welcome or welcome back to the channel if that is the case. Yes, nearly at October then, so uh, I better go through what I've got planned for next month. Uh, so quite a few bits and pieces to get through. So first on the list is the stuff for uh, my adventures in genre for October. Uh, and October is for oldies, uh, and by that I mean classics. Uh, so I mean really sort of pre-20th century or just there about turn of the century. Um, and I've decided to go with all female authors as well. Um, and I've picked one British author, one European author and one American author. Um, so uh, the British author is, there's only one, isn't there really? Jane Austen. I have never read any Jane Austen. Um, and I've picked Pride and Prejudice. Uh, I know the story. I've watched a few different adaptations, but the one that I really actually do like uh, is the BBC miniseries from the 90s, I believe, with Colin Firth as Mr Darcy uh, and uh, Jennifer Ailey as Elizabeth Bennet. Um, and I really enjoyed that and I still enjoy that uh, to the day. My, my wife loves Pride and Prejudice, loves Jane Austen generally. Um, and so that does get thrown on the television when she wants, uh, you know, a, a comfort watch. So I've I've seen it relatively recently, within the last couple of years, again. Uh, and I think it's about time that I read the book, or at least listen to the book, because this is part of the Audible Plus catalogue. Um, so I will be listening to this. So the European author that I've picked is Baroness Orksy, um, who was born in Hungary, but ended up living in Britain. She married a British man. Um, and the book is The Scarlet Pimpernel, um, which I will be reading on uh, is Kindle Unlimited. It's uh, the Amazon Classic Edition, uh, which also comes with aud audio, so I can, I can listen and read along, uh, which does help me when it comes to classics, generally, in terms of kind of accessing the, 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 the prose and the, the, sort of the difference in language style that you get from, from books of that sort of age. Um, but yeah, The Scarlet Pimpernel, I was drawn to this because... When I was a kid, um, I was I, I really loved the Carry On films, uh, which were probably highly inappropriate, really, for the for the for the age I was watching them at. Um, I, but I didn't really get all of the double entendres, I don't think. Um, and uh, I, I just I just liked the silliness of them. Um, and uh, in in the uh, in Carry On, Don't Lose Your Head, which was one of my favourites, there was a character called the Black Fingernail. Uh, who essentially was a, a sort of a takeoff um, of the Scarlet Pimpernel, um, and and so I always wondered what the you know what the Scarlet Pimpernel the novel was was actually like. What was it about? So I thought now's the time to try it out. So if you don't know uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel, here's the blurb: um, At the dawn of the French Revolution, the men, women, and children of Paris have one hope to escape the guillotine: the masked and mysterious Scarlet Pimpernel. But who is this daring swordsman and quick-thinking master of disguise? London's privileged, self-obsessed Sir Percy Blakeney. When his estranged wife, Marguerite, falls prey to, to French envoy Chauvelin's blackmail, she unwittingly exposes the Pimpernel and imperils the covert league he commands. Um, so a bit of swashbuckling, sword-fighting adventure uh, from, I think, possibly this is 1904, so we're just into the 20th century. Uh, but yes, we'll give that one a go. And then the uh, the American author that I've picked, uh, with a little help from a friend, um, is Kate Chopin. Uh, and the book is The Awakening, which is also going to be a Kindle Unlimited uh, Amazon Classics edition, again with the audio, uh, if I want it. Um, and uh, I, I had to ask some advice on this from a buddy, um, because my only knowledge of... of female authors of this sort of era in terms of American authors is Louisa May Alcott and I didn't want to read Little Women uh, partly because it's bloody long um, and also because it just doesn't really grab me 
there's one that I want to read. Uh, and so I got some suggestions and this is the one that I picked. Uh, so here's the blurb in case you're not familiar. Um, on vacation in Grand Isle, Louisiana, a married woman falls in love with a charming, attentive young man. The relationship spurs Edna to explore her longing for independence and creative fulfilment. It also compels her to defy conventions, rejecting the constraints of marriage and motherhood. Um, so an early feminist uh, text by the sounds of it. So yeah, those are the three female authors I will be reading uh, for of classic texts for my October uh, Adventures in Genre. So next up then, a big project for me in October is uh, my Face Your Fears project, uh, which I'm doing kind of as a bit of a Halloween-y type thing. I don't really do Halloween and I read horror all year round. So I didn't want to kind of just do just more, generally more horror. Um, there is horror in this bunch of books, but I'm doing it because these are books uh, that I have kept putting off and putting off because I'm actually a little scared to read them. Uh, they are not all horror by any means. Uh, I have got an announcement video for that project out already. I will link to that in the description if you want more details on the books that I'm about to talk about. So I'll quickly run through these, but I won't go into detail. If you want more detail, check out that video. And likewise, although this is a personal project, I am opening it up and saying if anybody has any books that they are also a little scared to read or daunted, anything like that, it doesn't have to be, you know, scary, just daunted <laughs> by, um, then uh, then do let me know. Uh, and uh, I'm, although I'm not making this an official event, I'm more than happy for people to jump on board uh, and I can always make a Discord group or what have you uh, if people want to get involved with this project. So the books that I will be reading for this are uh, Manhunt by Gretchen Falcon Martin, which is a post-apocalyptic horror um, about uh, uh, trans women and men uh, undertaking a, a grotesque journey of survival. Um, that it's the trans elements to this that, that I know I will find very difficult to read. Um, and so that is why that's one on, that one's on the list. Um, next up, I've got Troop by Nick Cutter. Um, this is one that's been on my list for quite a while to read, but I know that there's some animal cruelty in it uh, and potentially some pretty horrible body horror uh, and although I do like body horror uh, I, I have a limit with it so whether this will be too much for me I don't know to be honest it's the animal cruelty that I think unnerves me more knowing that that's in it um, and so yes the troop is the next one uh, then we've got the girl next door by Jack Ketchum uh, this is one which I, I see this on every disturbing books list that I've ever come across um, I have a mor morbid curiosity with this. I like the sound of the premise. Um, I think it's interesting. And the fact that it's, you know, kind of obviously largely inspired by a true story uh, kind of makes me want to read it um, to see what I make of it. But I know that it is, you know, extreme in its description of the torture that takes place. And it's torture of uh, two young girls uh, at the hands of other children. Um, and yeah, I think it could be a bit much for me. I, I'm very, very apprehensive about reading that, but uh, this is what this project's for. <laughs> uh, then next up, I have The Cement Garden by Ian McEwan, um, which my wife has been on at me to read for a long time. Uh, but again, more stuff about children, uh, potentially abuse. Uh, certainly, I think there's some incest in here. Um, and just some, you know, some dark themes, some potentially disturbing themes. The things about children, especially when there's negative things in it, uh, I find very difficult to read. Um, so, uh, so yes, that is the next one on the list. Um, then I've got a non-fiction, which is uh, The Rape of Nan King by Iris Chang. Uh, this will be an audio book. Um, and this is about the, uh, a massacre that took place in uh, the city of Nanking in China in 1937, uh, when Japanese soldiers swept into the city uh, and not only um, basically destroyed the city, uh, ransacked, burned it, uh, burned it down, but also um, the, the, the systematic rape, torture and murder of over 300,000 Chinese civilians. 
Um, and it's one of those events which I, I kind of feel like I need to be informed about this. It's important to know that this thing, this bit, that this event happened and to understand it. Um, but there is, you know, there is going to be some pretty horrific content to that. Uh, so I've been putting that one off uh, because of that. Uh, but yeah, it's a good time to, to, to get into that with this project. Uh, then I've got Naked Lunch by William S. Burroughs. Um, this is one that's on the list because it daunts me. I'm, I'm kind of scared to read it because I'm a little scared that I won't understand it and I'll end up feeling a bit stupid, which is a silly reason, I know, but that's just how, that's just how I am. That's just my, how my brain works. Um, but the only way I'll know is to give it a go. Uh, and if I don't understand it, I need to just not beat myself up over it. Um, it sounds like it's, you know, pretty bizarre uh, in its prose, it's transgressive fiction, um, but it's one that I do definitely want to want to try. Uh, then I've got a short ebook, which is uh, A Sincere Warning About the Entity in Your Home by Jason Arnup. Um, this is one that I really do want to read. I think the premise of this is fantastic. It's written as a letter to you, the reader, um, you know, a from a previous occupant of your home, um, warning you about this entity, this this evil entity uh, that's in your home. Uh, and I, I think this one could be nightmare fuel. This one could certainly make me very jumpy and a little bit oh, around the house when I'm up late on my own or when I'm lying in bed <laughs> at night. Um, so uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm apprehensive about that one, but it could also be fun. But I have put it off because I'm a little scared of it. And then finally, if I get to it, um, I will read Cujo by Stephen King, which is one of the Stephen Kings I haven't read yet. Uh, and that's because anything to do with dogs and potential, you know, dogs getting hurt or dogs dying uh, in books is an immediate thing. You know, that, that, that will make me very, very apprehensive and I tend to, to shy away from. Um, and, you know, it's it's the dog in this is you know it's a rabid dog it is the horror uh, of the book um and it's not going to end well for the dog is it it's not going to end well for cujo um so <laughs> so yeah so i kind of i go i will go into that with with some serious trepidation <laughs> um so but if i yeah if i get time i will i will give it a go um so that's quite a bit already um but I did need to make sure that I'd got some stuff on the list that is nice. <laughs> some stuff that is fun, that is sweet, that is, you know, uh, something I can turn to uh, and read just before I go to bed, potentially, uh, you know, to get any horror uh, or anything horrific uh, out of my brain before I go and try and sleep. Uh, so I've got four more uh, things to go on the list. Uh, for if I need that that lightness to uh, balance out the dark. Uh, so the first one is Heartstopper Volume 2, which I bought a while back after I read the first volume and really liked it. Um, so uh, I will continue on with that. That will be a nice, easy read, uh, you know, and some some visual stuff. You know, again, it's a good good to have some a different form uh, to read uh, in addition to, to my, you know, text-based stuff. Um, and as I say, I really enjoyed the first one. It was very heartwarming. Uh, it was very, uh, very human. Uh, and so, yeah, if I, if I want something that's just kind of a nice, a bit of a nice hug, uh, then I shall read that. Um, another one in a similar vein is uh, Lumberjanes, Volume 3. Um, I've, I'll say I've read, read the first two this year, first first two volumes. It's just brilliant fun. It's It's fun. It's... Uh, it's dry in its humour, it's got lovely characters in it, it's, you know, it's about the power of friendship and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and it's adventurous and, yeah, it's just, again, it's just a really nice, colourful, energetic, fun piece to read. So I will read some more of that, uh, if I, again, if I want, want a bit, something a bit more light. <laughs> um, then I thought I would uh, have a go at some more monster romance. <laughs> Uh, and I noticed that Lily Main, who is the author of the Monstrous series, which I've read the first four of so far, which I really like, uh, has written something in tandem with another author um, whose name I've just forgotten. I'm afraid I will put it up on screen. 
Um, but this is called Whispers in the Dark. Um, and this is another um, male, male monster gay fantasy romance. Um, and uh, this one follows a guy called Cody, a 24 year old, uh, who's kind of lost hope of having a life of his own. Um, he's, he's, all of his time is spent nursing his, uh, his dying spiteful stepfather and kind of playing maid to his bully of a half-brother. Uh, and his escape is playing a, an online fantasy game uh, and talking to a strange unearthly presence under his bed that may or may not actually exist. Uh, but everything changes when his nightly visitor under the bed, uh, who introduces himself as Nor, starts talking back. So, sounds interesting to me. Uh, some elements of, you know, game, video game stuff in there. Um, this is the first book in the Black Oasis uh, series, by the sounds of it. Uh, Black Oasis is the game that Cody plays. So, as I say, I really, really enjoy, uh, I've enjoyed what I've read of Lily Main stuff so far. Uh, and I thought, you know, a bit of, a, a, bit, a bit, bit more gay monster romance is, you know, good for the soul. <laughs> so, uh, so that's another one for me uh, to counterbalance the, uh, the, the horrendous stuff. Um, and then finally, I've got an audio book that's been sat in my library for a while, uh, something cosy. Uh, so I thought I would go with this, uh, and that is Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death uh, by M.C. Beaton. So a bit of cosy mystery uh, and, uh, you know, so something set in a, a, a quiet little uh, English town, English village, um, you know, with the village committee and uh, you know, kind of, I suppose, comedy of manners and all that kind of stuff, and and some some quiche murder uh, <laughs> and some sleuthing, amateur sleuthing. Um, so, uh, so yes, I can give that one a go if I want something cosy. Uh, so that that is it for that month. I think that's plenty for October. Um, I doubt I'll get through everything <laughs> as usual, um, but I will do my darndest to get through as much as possible. Uh, so uh, that is it from me today. Uh, thank you very much for watching, folks. Um, if you've read any of the stuff that I'm about to try and read, uh, do let me know in the comments. As I've said, if you do fancy joining me for my Face Your Fears project, you can either drop me a comment in this video and let me know, or you can uh, comment on the announcement video links in the description. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do consider giving me a like and subscribing for more content coming very soon. But from me, for now, that's Tara.